Hi, my name is Marcia Skripik and I'm a, an author and I've written over 20 books. I've written three books that are set during the internment operations in Canada in World War I. My own grandfather was interned and so the very first book that I ever had published was Silver Threads and it's dedicated to my grandfather um, and it's set during the internment. Another book that I wrote that was published in 2014 is called Dance of the Banished and it's about people from my hometown of Brantford, Ontario, who were interned in Kappas Casing. Uh, they were Alevi Kurds, a very small religious minority who were um, horribly abused by Canada in World War I. The book that I'm going to read to you from is uh, my Dear Canada Diary novel, Prisoners in the Promised Land, the internment, the Ukrainian internment diary of Anya Solonyuk. This book is also available in French and also as an ebook, so you can probably get it from your library even right now if libraries are shut down because of the pandemic. Um, what I want to read to you is this one scene from Sunday, August 16, uh, 1914. This is a novel written as a diary. So my character Anya uh, is on the way to church just after Canada and Britain have declared war on Germany, um, but also all foreigners at this time are looked at with um, suspicion and because Ukrainians were considered Austrian citizens, they're considered enemies too. And so this is what happened to them on the way to church. On the way to church today, a man ran up to Baba. Baba is the Ukrainian uh, name for uh, grandmother. Ran up to Baba and grabbed her babushka off her head. Baba held on to it and wouldn't let him pull it off her head. He pulled so hard that he knocked her to the ground, but Baba still wouldn't let go. Tato, that means father, yelled at the man, but still it didn't do any good. And by that time, there were a couple of other men gathered around and even a woman. They were all laughing at Baba, telling her she should go back to where she came from. Tato's face was red with anger and he punched the man in the mouth. That made the man let go of Baba's scarf. Mama and I helped Baba to her feet. There was blood on the man's teeth. I watched in horror as he punched Tato's stomach so hard that Tato fell down. I ran to help him up, but before I could get there, another man kicked Tato in the ribs. Just then, a couple of men from our reading club came to Tato's defense. The other men scattered. I hate to think what would have happened if those friends hadn't come by just then. Mama said that maybe we should go back to the flat, but Tonto brushed off the dust from his clothing and then he checked to see if Baba was injured. Without saying a word, he held out an arm for Baba, which she took. Mama walked on the other side of Tonto and gently looped her arm into his back so that he didn't uh, limp too much. Mikola looked at me like he was about to burst into tears. Do you want a piggyback? I asked him. A smile poked through his sadness, so I crouched down and he hopped up on my back and we continued on our way to church. Thank you.